Yesterday, I was sitting with a friend of mine who's a senior software engineer and watching him write code for his new startup. Well, to be honest with you, I was really more so listening to him. That's right, he had multiple AI models running and he was literally just speaking to them and telling them very clearly what he wanted to get done. Now, I'm talking about minute long, super detailed audio messages to these LLMs. And truthfully, when I code now, I do a pretty similar thing. Models are getting so good that nearly 90% of the code that I write is AI generated and I rarely need to write tons of lines manually like I would have just 18 months ago. Now this means that integrating AI in your workflow is becoming more and more important and if you want to keep up with those that are using it effectively, you really need to take this seriously. Now I say this to drive the point home that coding by hand is slowly dying. We're moving much more to a code by prompt world and in today's video, I'm going to prove that to you by demoing a very powerful tool called Warp. Now at a high level, Warp is an agentic development environment presented in an application that looks very similar to your terminal. It has a lot of very interesting features and it's bringing a new approach to agentic development compared to something like Cursor or Claude Code. Now I teamed up with them for this video and I'm gonna give you a tutorial on how to take advantage of this tool, so stick around. All right, so I'm on the computer now and I wanna go ahead and dive in. Now I'm just on the Warp landing page. You can see that I'm on warp.dev. I'll also leave this link in the description in case you wanna check it out. And that is because if you wanna use Warp, you do need to download this tool because it is a standalone application. It's not, for example, a CLI tool, like something like Claude Code. Okay, so go ahead, download this if you wanna mess around with it. It is free to download and you can do this for your respective operating system or you can use something like Brew to install it. Now when it comes to the pricing, there is a free tier of course, so that's the one that you can mess around with. And then if you want, you can upgrade to the Pro, Turbo, Enterprise tiers as well. Anyways, let's hop over to the editor because I wanna show you what this actually looks like. Okay, so this is Warp. I've opened it up, again, it's a standalone application, so you gotta install it first. And from here, this probably looks pretty familiar because it's very similar to the terminal environment that most of us are used to typing it. Now I wanna show you a few things that this can do, and then I wanna talk about the logic behind this user interface and how this compares to, let's call it like a full-fledged kind of IDE, something like Cursor, where 80% of the screen is like files and code and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so from here, I can use this like a normal terminal. So I can do something like, you know, make to test, right? And I can just go ahead and create that. Or I can actually ask in natural language. So I can say, you know, change to my desktop. Okay, so something quite simple, but it will actually detect, all right, they're using natural language here. It's not trying to run a command. So let me generate the correct command. Okay, boom, let's run that. And then it will change us to the desktop. Okay, so we're now in the desktop directory. You can see that here. Now from here, I can say make dir test, okay, like that. So I've make, made the directory. I can cd into the directory and I can just use this like a normal terminal. But then where it becomes quite powerful is that at any point in time, I can use the AI integration. So here I'm gonna use ls. We see that we don't have anything. And I'm gonna say make me a new Python file to print a you know Christmas tree or something, okay? Christmas tree like that. So it should go ahead and put that inside of this folder. So let's see what it does here. You can see that it's loading a diff and then it should be able to generate the code. Okay, and there we go. You can see that it's now generated this Python script for me. Pretty basic, but we've got it finished and we have a few options here, right? So I can cancel this, I can refine it. If I press refine, this is gonna allow me to actually type a new prompt and adjust the script. I can directly edit it. So if I do that, it opens up kind of full screen here and then you know I can print something, I can add a comment. I can just start working in this directly like I would in any kind of file. And then of course I can apply the changes. So let's go apply. It's now gonna actually make this file for me. So give this a second. It says I've created a Python file called Christmas tree. And then it's actually showing me the command to run it. So it says you can run it with this. So I can actually go ahead and just press this and run it in terminal. And you see that it gives me the command. We'll press enter and then it prints out the Christmas tree. Cool, so super basic. I'm just trying to show you kind of what the interface actually looks like and how this works. There's a lot of other settings. I'm gonna go over a few quick ones. And then again, I wanna talk about this UI decision. So you can see here that we have three modes in the bottom left-hand corner of this terminal. We have auto detection, agent mode, and terminal mode. Pretty straightforward. If you put it in terminal, then you can just type uh, standard commands and you're not gonna have the LLM triggered. If you put it in agent mode, then this is just natural language. And then if you go in auto detection, which is what I mostly leave it in, it will auto detect what you want and then reply based on that. Then you can go here, of course, and you can change the model that you're using. So switch it to, for example, Claude 4 Sonnet or something, but I usually just leave it in auto mode. 
Okay, cool. So now that you've seen a little bit about what this can do, let's talk about why this is in this terminal interface. Now, as I said in the intro, we're moving much more into coding by prompt rather than coding by manually writing tons of lines of code. Now, if you think of an editor like Cursor, for example, or an IDE like you know, VS Code, 80, maybe 85% of the screen is dedicated to coding and to files. But realistically, most of the time now, you're working in that really small AI chat window, and then you're probably running a few commands, setting up some environments, et cetera. So it doesn't really make sense that most of the screen is dedicated to something that you're hardly ever looking at, because most of the time, you're just interfacing with the AI. So the logic here from Warp is that rather than having this kind of full-fledged coding environment where you're seeing all of the code on screen, let's put this in an interface that's actually closer to what developers are doing on a day-by-day -day basis, which is mostly interfacing with the AI. So that's kind of the logic here. Let me know if you guys like agree or disagree with that and how you like this type of interface. But for me personally, it's actually quite slick to deal with, especially when I'm not writing a ton of manual lines of code. Anyways, what I want to do now is I want to get into a more advanced example and show you the benefit of using a tool like Warp. All right, so I just made a new folder here called AI Scraper, and what I'm going to attempt to do over the next few minutes is build a scalable web scraping API using Warp. Now, first things first, I need a plan. So I'm going to say, help me make this plan more clear and put it in a readme file. Okay, and then I'm going to paste in this basic plan that I have. Now, I'm not going to read through all of it, but point is that I want to have these few different components. Like I want to containerize this, I want to use Docker, I want to deploy this on a VPS, and I want to use Python and Playwright for actually scraping and have a basic fast API server to serve the API. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. I'm going to get started with this plan. And then once the plan is done, I want to start building these component by component and show you how we can actually use a feature here in Warp called multi-threaded agents. All right, so just finished with the plan here. I've been scrolling through this. It actually looks pretty good. So for right now, I don't have any adjustments to this. I'm just going to go ahead and press on apply changes. And then I'm going to use this plan now to start creating these components. Now at this point, I'm actually going to get this to initialize a Git repository so I don't lose any of this work. So I'm going to say, create a new git repo and make the first commit. Okay, so git init, let's go ahead and run that. I can just press enter and it will automatically do that. It says index and code base. Okay, so yes, let's index this just so that we can get all this stuff better. It says, okay, we're going to change the branch to main. So let's press enter and go ahead and do that. Uh, and let's see what the next command is. Okay, add the readme, it looks good. Okay, and it gave me the commit. Now this commit is super detailed, so I'm gonna say, make this more brief because I really don't want it to be that long. And then hopefully it's gonna give me a slightly better command here. Okay, perfect, that's much better. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so readme is here, and now you can see that it actually detects that we're in the main branch, so it shows that to me, and we kind of have that git feature. Now, one thing I do want to show you is that if you do use ls, for example, and you see a file, see like readme.md, you can actually open this. So if I press here, it says open file or open in warp. So if I press on open in warp, then you can actually just view the file directly inside of here. So in this case, we're getting the preview of the markdown file, uh, but you can also open code files and stuff like that as well. Okay, so now that we're here, I want to move on to the next steps. So the first thing that I want to do probably is start working on the scraper. So I'm going to say, start creating the scraper worker based on the described plan. And let me improve this prompt a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just improved this prompt a little bit. So let's go ahead and run that. This is going to take a second. So once it's finished, I'll be right back. And then we're going to start building out the other components because right now I'm just starting with the kind of AI scraping part. Once we have that worker done, then we'll move on to the API, the database setup, etc. All right, so I've just been messing with this for probably a few minutes here. I had a few different prompts, but I got this to generate pretty much the entire scraper system. So if we scroll through here, you can see there's a bunch of diffs, a bunch of stuff was created for us, all these commands are ran, I also get it, got it to test what it was doing. So it generated a test script for me. And now if we go ls, you can see that we have the scraper directory. So let's cd into scraper ls there. And you can see that we have all of our different files. So we have the Docker file, example.py, models.py, main.py. And if we want to open one of these, we can open it directly in warp. And we can see all of the code in here. And then of course, if we want, we can start editing something right inside of warp. Okay, cool. So let's get out of that. We can just leave it as kind of like an open tab or we can go back here. 
Cool, so now that we have this, I wanna show you the multi-threaded agents feature. This allows us to have multiple agents running in parallel and kind of working together. So at this point, we go cd dot dot, you'll see, if we look ls, that we have our scraper directory, but we still need to create the API. We need to set up our PostgreSQL database or our Redis database, and then we need to do all of the Docker-related stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prepare two prompts here. One that's gonna set up the API, and then one that's gonna set up all of the database stuff, and I'm gonna run them at the exact same time, so give me a second to prep that. All right, so I've just prepared two prompts here, one for setting up the Postgres database and the Redis configuration, and then one for making the fast API server. Now notice that I have two separate windows, right? And I still have my other chat window open here. So what I can do is I can just go here, I can press enter, I can go here, I can press enter, and now both of them are running in parallel at the exact same time. So we don't need to wait for one to finish before the other one runs, they just can go ahead and run. So the agents are still running right now, but I wanna show you something interesting. If you press on this button up here where it says agents, it will show you all of your active agents. And if you see yellow, this means that the agent is waiting on you. So here I'll go and just press apply change. And now if we go back here, you'll see it goes to purple. So we actually don't need to keep switching between these tabs. You can just look and say, okay, well, what's the color? Do I need to take action here? Yes, I do. And then it will actually notify you um, if you enable this in the settings so that you can see when you need to go back and take this action in the agent, which I think is a pretty cool feature. So this is an example of what I mean. You can see that it just popped up this little notification saying, hey, we need to actually take this action here because I'm in the other agent. So if I go here now, I can press apply changes and then boom, that should go away. Okay, so both of these agents are finished now. You can see they're kind of giving me this finalized output telling me what I need to do to start the various services. And again, one of the reasons I like working with this in the terminal is because there is a lot of commands that are being ran by the agents as well as generating the code. So at this point, both the agents have finished, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toggle the voice input now, and I'm just gonna start talking to the LLM. Actually, let's switch back to auto mode as well. Can you please read through this directory and then execute all of the install and configuration commands and test the API to see if it is working? Okay, and then I'll press stop. And there we go. So let's go ahead and press enter and let's see what this can do. And this is kind of the power I think of running this inside of the terminal is that it can execute all of those commands for us. So we're doing everything in the place in which it should be done, right? Rather than copying these commands from a chat window over to the terminal or having them kind of in all kinds of different places, we can just use this natively inside of the terminal. And I quite like that we can have multiple of these open at a time. It feels like a very native way to do this. Okay, and actually at this point, just to make this a little bit easier for us, I wanna go ahead and enable the autonomous mode so that we don't need to keep running these commands manually. So if we go here to the settings, so we can go to warp preview and then settings, in your case, it'll just be warp and then settings. We can go and we can start enabling some of this. So let's go over to the AI and you'll see that we have a bunch of things that we can toggle here. So for example, for permissions, apply code difference, we can just say always allow. Read file, always allow. Create plans, we'll say agent decide. Execute commands, we'll say always allow. And then down here, of course, there's a command deny list, right? So there's things that we, of course, don't want the agent to be able to do, like maybe deleting a bunch of stuff. So we can add that as a command. So again, rm dot, add that as a deny command. So now I just can't delete everything, right? Same thing with calling MCP servers, inputs. There's a bunch of stuff that you can go through here. And then you can obviously enable disable voice mode. And then also you can set a key bind for this uh, to kind of toggle voice mode. So for now though, I've put it in the autonomous mode because I've pretty much just always allowed it to run the commands. So give the agent full autonomy, no approval required. And now let's go back. Okay. And let's go with run. Okay, so now at this point, it should just run the commands for us and actually set all of this stuff up. And there you go, you can see now it's kind of creating and executing the commands without asking us for permission. Okay, and what's really interesting is actually, I didn't do anything and it just spun up Docker desktop for me automatically because this wasn't running. So you can see now Docker's running, but I didn't do that. Like it was able to run the command here where it opened Docker up for me, started that daemon thread, and now it's able to connect to Docker and actually run the, um, what is it, Docker file. So while this agent was running, I was just messing with a few settings that I wanna to show to you. So if you go to Warp Preview, go back to Settings here, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff that you can enable. So of course, you can look at the account, you can look at the AI settings like I mentioned. And then one thing to note is that you can add the MCP servers. So if you click into this here, you can add them. I'm just not gonna show that in this video. And then of course, we have rules as well. So if you've never heard of rules, you can actually create rules that the AI will always follow. So for example, I just made a simple one here that says never use PIP for installing, always use UV rather 
other than pip. You can add as many of these as you want. And as you use this tool more and more, this becomes obviously more powerful because you're able to just constantly kind of add this knowledge base or this uh, these rules to the agent. Now, a few other things, appearance is probably useful to mess with. You can adjust, for example, the opacity of the screen, the themes, etc. You can do the font size, which I just bumped up a little bit to make it easier to view. And then you can go to features. So here there's just so many things. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but the one thing I do wanna show you here is called Warp Drive. So if you open this side kind of toggle bar here, it's a pretty small icon, but if you press on it, you'll get this Warp Drive thing popping up. Now you can see I have a team because I'm using the Pro subscription, you may not, but down here you'll have Personal where you can really quickly access the MCP servers, the rules, and then we have these things called Notebooks. I don't wanna get into these too much, but essentially in Warp, you can create these notebooks that are kind of like interactive playgrounds for messing with various terminal commands. You can add all of these blocks to them. You can directly execute the blocks. Kind of interesting and something worth noting. So I'm gonna close this notebook here because I really don't need that. And then I will lastly show you here that if we go up here and we go to drive, there's a bunch of other things that we can do. So for example, we can make new personal environment variables. So if I press on this, we can have environment variables that will just be persistent within this shell. So rather than having to load them in from a .env file, although you could of course do that as well, you can actually just directly add them here so that they're accessible to your code or to whatever's running inside of this kind of personal shell that you have. Uh, you're also then able to add them for a team, but we'll get into some team features later. Anyways, I just wanna wait for Docker to finish spinning up here because it needs to install a bunch of stuff, and then we can make sure that this code is working. All right, so now all of my containers are spun up here. And actually, I just wanted to show you one thing. If we go to tab, I can actually split tabs. So for example, I can go split pane right, and I can open up a new tab here and say, you know, use curl to test my API that is running via Docker right now. Okay, and then it should be able to generate that command and test it. Now I'm not gonna go through the whole deployment process here because obviously this is gonna take a second, I need to get a virtual private server, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can see that everything is kind of running, executed, and I really didn't need to make many manual code changes at all because of the fact that I was running all of these different agents, doing it in terminal mode, reviewing what it was doing, et cetera. So let's go run, let's see if we can actually hit this endpoint and get some response. There you go, it says that it's responding. Okay, nice, so let's check this endpoint as well. If we wanna go in and view the commands, we can see that we got a response, and we can see there was some error that popped up, so obviously I could continue along this process. The model can fix this for us because, well, you know, this happens, right? Errors happen, we need to debug them, but for now I think this is fine. So that's pretty much all of the features that I wanted to show you in this video. Last thing again is that we do have this team feature. So if you want, you can actually add workflows into here. You can share folders, prompts, notebooks, environment variables with the team. Again, not gonna get into that too much because that would require me having someone else that I'm working with right now to really demo, uh, but kind of an interesting feature to be aware of. Anyways, I think this tool is super cool. It's definitely something I'm gonna be using as part of my workflow. And I really do actually appreciate this new type of UI because I do actually think that is where coding is going to, working more in this kind of terminal environment, interfacing a lot with the AI, as opposed to working in kind of the editor or the IDE, where again, you just mostly don't need to touch a lot of the code. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of this tool in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in another one.